In this video, we'll discuss tank problems as an example of mathematical modeling. So one of the most common types of physical problems to introduce the idea of mathematical modeling is the idea of a tank problem. So we're talking like water tank, not like military tank. The idea here is basically you have a tank that is full of some liquid and you've got sort of one entrance flow, one outflow from the tank, and the key point here is going to be the accumulation equation. You could think about this with just the volume of water in the tank, that would work. Well, that's usually a fairly simple equation to try to solve. What's more common is to look at some sort of concentration or amount of some solute in this tank. Most common ones you'll see there are salt or dye or something like that that's in this tank that you're trying to analyze. And the idea is going to be, you're gonna have some amount of flow rate coming into the tank up here. You'll have some flow rate in some units. I'll say gallons per minute as a starting point, but they could be any volume per time units. And it will have some concentration of the solute. And so it's gonna go into the tank and you're gonna also take water out of the tank at a different rate. It could be the same or it could be a different rate, another flow rate in gallons per minute. And the normal assumption for these sorts of problems is that the tank is well mixed. And will sometimes be illustrated by having, you know, a little mixer in there. Now what this means in terms of setting this problem up is that the concentration of solute in the outflow stream is the same as the concentration in the tank. It means if I know how much is in the tank or I have an unknown function for how much is in the tank as a function of time, I can use that same value to represent the amount that I will actually have in the outstream here. So by looking at amount in, amount out, and dealing with the accumulation equation, that will let us write differential equation to model this sort of situation. So an example here, we have the following. Take of water stream contains 100 gallons of water and five pounds of salt. The water stream containing one pound per gallon of salt flows into the tank at a rate of two gallons per minute. Tank is well mixed. Exit stream removes water from the tank at a rate of two gallons per minute. Find a model for Q of T, the amount of salt in the tank at any time T, and solve for Q of T. What's long time behavior? Does this make sense? So the key thing from this as well is in general, you'll be looking at Q of T, which is an amount of salt in the tank. It's not a concentration. It is the amount in pounds in the tank at any time T. Let's start by drawing a picture to fit this situation. So we have a tank. In it, we have 100 gallons of water, at least to start. And what are our two streams? Well, I have an in-stream that is flowing at a rate of two gallons per minute and has one pound per gallon of salt. Tank is well mixed. So let's draw on our little mixer thing. And there's an outflow stream, also at a rate of two gallons per minute. Now, because it's well mixed, I know that if I have Q of T, the amount of salt inside, then the concentration of the outflow stream will also depend on Q. It'll be Q over 100 pounds per gallon. Because there are Q pounds of salt inside the tank, and the volume here is fixed at 100 gallons. It's fixed because the inflow is two gallons per minute and the outflow is also two gallons per minute, so the volume doesn't change. If that volume changed, you have to take it into account in this part here. So let's try to write a model for this physical system. So let's look at the rate of change of salt. So dq dt, how does dq dt change? Well, it changes based on the inflow and then minus the outflow. And keep in mind the units here. The units here should all be in pounds per minute because we're looking at a rate of change of Q, which is in pounds. So we're looking at Everything should be in pounds per minute here. So how fast does salt enter the tank? Well, it enters via a flow rate of two gallons per minute multiplied by a concentration of one pound per gallon, which tells me that two pounds per minute of salt are entering this tank. For the outflow, I have a flow rate of two gallons per minute, same as before, but now my concentration depends on Q, 
and it's Q over 100 pounds per gallon. So that gives me an outflow of salt of basically Q over 50 pounds per minute. So I can write my differential equation then as EQ dt is 2 for the 2 pounds per minute on the inflow minus Q over 50. Now what is my initial condition here? Well, I'm told that I start with five pounds of salt, so my Q at zero is five. And now we can try to solve this differential equation. So let's rewrite this as a first order linear equation by moving the Q over 50 to the other side. I end up with Q prime plus Q over 50 equals two. I can then use the method of integrating factors to find the solution. So the integrating factor here, mu of t, will be e to the t over 50, because my coefficient here is a 1 over 50. Integrate that to get t over 50, put the exponential. I will then have e to the t over 50 q prime plus 1 over 50 e to the t over 50 q equals 2 e to the t over 50. This side is a product rule derivative. So when I integrate both sides, I will get this being e to the t over 50 times q equals the integral of 2 e to the t over 50, which is going to be 100. I'm dividing by 1 over 50, e to the t over 50 plus c, or u of t is 100 plus c e to the minus t over 50. I'd actually solve this out. I want to figure out the value of c that I need. And I know that q of 0 should be 5. And q of 0 is 100 plus c, which tells me that c is negative 95. So I have as a final answer here, q of t is 100 minus 95 e to the minus t over 50. Now what does this tell me? Let's go back to the question. The question asks for the long time behavior of Q and does this make sense? I go to my solution. We see that as T gets really big, this here is gonna go away, right? It's gonna be E to the minus T over 50. That's gonna vanish because this is gonna go to zero because that's what happens when T gets big. So the end result here is 100. Does a long time behavior of 100 make sense? Well, if we go back to the actual problem statement, it kind of does make sense because our inflow rate here has a concentration of one pound per gallon. If you think in long enough time, if you keep pumping this in, the inner concentration should also go to one pound per gallon because you just keep putting in water at that concentration into the tank. And so if that happens, a one pound per gallon concentration with a tank of 100 gallons means that my Q of T should go to 100 in the limit because that will give it a one pound per gallon concentration. So in this case, the answer does make sense, which it should because we're writing this physical model. And we see that we get an actual equation for what's gonna happen to Q of T over time. With a lot of different answers, I could ask different types of questions and still get those answers out of this function Q of T. That's the idea of a tank problem, how it's structured, and then how to analyze and solve it using first order linear differential equations.